Hi there, Daniel Castillo with Dixon Pacifica Real Estate. Today I wanted to take a moment to talk a little bit about uh, the due diligence period. What they are, what they mean, what due diligence money is or can be, and how that's different from earnest money. Now the one first thing I want to start out with is mentioning that uh, North Carolina is a buyer beware state, so that means that all responsibility falls on that buyer to be able to do all uh, the inspections, research, whatever it may be. Uh, none of it's automatic, none of it's just given to you. You have to negotiate for it, uh, which is something that you would talk to your real estate agent about. So with that said, <clears throat> due diligence period, what is that? The due diligence period is gonna be the time that you are going to negotiate, that you're gonna have to be able to do all the inspections, appraisals, surveys, everything that is pertinent towards the purchase of that property. Now, when you're negotiating your contract, sellers are generally gonna to wanna to see at least earnest money. Earnest money is put down in consideration of the property, right? There's no one set standard as for what that is. Uh, you'll work that out with your agent as well as you're negotiating the contract. Uh, but then due diligence is the period that you inspect. Now, earnest money and due diligence interconnect. Uh, they're, they're very much connected. You can get your earnest money back if you back out during your due diligence period. If you go past your due diligence period, you will be forfeiting that earnest money towards the seller. That's why it's, uh, it's that big deal of that in consideration of, um, you know, it basically shows how confident you are in wanting to purchase the property because if you say, I'm willing to put 5000 7000 or $10,000 down and are willing to forfeit it if you back out of back out of the deal beyond your due diligence period, right? So it, it shows a, a sense of seriousness there. It gives the sellers a little bit of confidence, right? Now, the due diligence, again, that's not given to you automatically. You negotiate for that. It's not necessary to give money up uh, for that, but sellers usually look like to see some type of money because of the fact that once you go under contract, you're essentially like taking your home off the market. And so if they're gonna be going in good faith, allowing you to come in and do all your inspection periods, be able to back out. Uh, backing out. During the due diligence period, you can back out for any reason at all. You could say, um, I really don't like the, the color of that wall and I don't wanna repaint it and I, I'm backing out, right? So within that due diligence period, you can pretty much back out for any reason that you want. You will lose your due diligence money, but you will recapture your earnest money, okay? So those are uh, some of the differences there. Now, two checks are gonna be written whenever you go on the contract. One's gonna be the due diligence check, which is gonna be handed to, to the seller, essentially. You're gonna give it to the agent. That agent's gonna give it to the seller. That They're gonna deposit that. That money is gone. Earnest money, that's going to be given to whoever is holding the escrow account. That could be the, the buyer's agency, the listing agency, or it could also be the, the lawyer, right? The real estate lawyer. It's going to be held in an account that's going to be considered almost like a, a neutral party to the transaction, even if the buyer or the seller are holding it. Uh, it's written out to the escrow account. <clears throat> which means that if you back out during your due diligence period, you get that money back. That check is never gonna get handed to the seller until after the due diligence period, right? Which is why it's so important to make sure that you have a firm understanding of what you're gonna be getting yourself into, what you're trying to negotiate for, right? Um, a longer due diligence period is always gonna lower the stress for the buyer. A longer due diligence period is also something that the sellers are not going to want to see, right? Because it gives, it just, it's less confidence for them. It just leaves more opportunities for issues to come up, uh, the deal to potentially fall apart, which is why it's always good to have some money to go along with that due diligence period because it helps massage that seller. If you want 45 days of due diligence to do your inspections, appraisals, surveys, and renegotiations, if that's, uh, you know, things pop up on the inspection that you're gonna wanna have addressed, having the time to do all that and renegotiate is better for you. They're probably gonna view it as less of an advantage. So giving them money uh, 
for taking the money, the, the property essentially off the market, helps massage that. Likewise, if you want to leverage an aggressive deal, if you uh, see a home that's listed for 300000 and it's priced uh, within the competition, like a, that's a, a reasonably priced home, and you want to give them two fifty, go in with an, with an aggressive due diligence period, call it three weeks, and then uh, go in to close with two weeks to follow, so we're looking at five total weeks. We'll give that seller a little bit more confidence that one, you know what you're getting yourself into, and two, that they're actually gonna see this go to close. Vice versa, you need to make sure that you know what you're doing if you wanna go with that aggressive of a due diligence period and then turn around to close. But this comes down to, to what you've discussed with your agent, what you know you can handle, how familiar you are with the property or the project that you're trying to take on. So there, there's two sides to the coin, right? Do I want extended due diligence, which I'm probably gonna have to negotiate a little bit harder with that seller to try to get that time? Do I wanna go with a shorter due diligence period uh, so that I can convey some confidence, make my deal be more attractive, even if there are other people that might come in behind me and offer a little bit more money. Mine might seem like a little bit more of a sure thing. That's that confidence piece. Uh, there's many different ways that th these can be addressed, but the most important things to understand is you negotiate your due diligence period. None of it is automatic. It does not require you to put down money, but it does help to massage that seller. Earnest money is gonna be the bigger check that you're going to deliver. That is forfeited uh, after the due diligence period. You are giving that up, which is why it's so important to ensure that your due diligence period is one that you understand you can get everything done that you need to, to ensure that if for whatever reason, if you need to back out, you have the time to back out and recapture that earnest money because you don't wanna lose that. That's, you know, you don't wanna lose thousands of dollars. Worst case scenario, you lose a couple hundred bucks. Most people can live with that. A couple thousand dollars, that's gonna, that's gonna hurt a lot more. So those are basically the, the basic uh, ins and outs of what due diligence period are, what the earnest money is, and how they relate to each other. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. You can find me at Daniel Castillo Realtor on Facebook. If you wanna send some questions my way, you can also reach out to me at daniel at dixonpacifica.com. Uh, you know, uh, would love to hear from you. Let me know if you found this video helpful or if you have any questions about any other pieces within the, the real estate world. I'd love to bring those pieces of advice for you. And yeah, I hope you're enjoying the new year. Happy 2018.